<laughs> okay, we're gonna react to your enclosure submissions, and I'm gonna do it whilst keeping this on. And I've realised you may not even be able to hear me because this is trying to smother me to death. So, <laughs> right, let's get into it. <laughs> mm. Okay, this is from Sarah Rocchio. Basically, the Panther Chameleon um, is getting a new enclosure, and the 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 snake will also get a new one. Um, he came with this enclosure, and sadly it's not water resistant, but he'll get one, an upgrade at some point. I'm assuming this is for the Panther Chameleon, so... Yep, yeah, you've got your Jungle Dawn UV and the Halogen, bioactive, feels nice and secure. I can't, I can't get an idea of the size, but yeah, it looks good to me. As long as he can get back to that spot at the back, which it looks like he can, because it looks like he can get off on this branch on the left there and go around, then yeah, looks good to me. There's nothing I'm going to really nitpick about that. Maybe if you put some more sticks in the foreground so that it could have the open space at the front. But right, yeah, it's it's great. I I don't really have any complaints about that. I would be happy to have that in my own home. So fair play. Okay, so this snake's enclosure is actually really cool. I actually, for one, like the OSB look of the board where it's all like the strands because it kind of looks like leaves in the background. Um, I like the like lifted hide box on the side there. That's really cool. And then shavings, I'm a big fan of shavings. They elicit such great digging behaviour. I like the hanging thing at the back, which will allow it to climb up onto that. Um, there's a lot of good things about this enclosure. I think you could incorporate some more climbing structures, maybe some cork branches or something. But for the most part, it's it's, it's okay. You've, you've got the basics there. You've got hides on either end of the thermal gradient. I can see at the back there. You can see your probe coming down, and you've got a rock there. So I'm assuming you've got a basking spot there. Yeah, I can see the halogen. Um, the thing is here is that you've got the halogen and the UV at the opposite ends from each other. So if you could just shift that UV across to be on the same side, to be on the same, <laughs> to be on the same side as the halogen, then I think you're going to be doing better in terms of the, your gradient here. But yeah, other than that, there's nothing wrong with this. I like it a lot. If you try to offer just some more climbing structures and opportunities to climb, and I think you're pretty much there. Okay, so we've got this one from Christina. This enclosure, <laughs> I can't even talk in this. This enclosure is five foot long by two foot deep and three foot high. This is for her royal python. I really like the netting there. It's almost as if like there's a theme here, as if like this has been left in near some rural town in the west coast of Africa. I like this a lot. That halogen looks really close to the top of that hide over here. I don't know how big is your royal, because if it can't even fit between... I, I would say the gap between the royal and the halogen isn't far enough. But yeah, that's the only thing I complain here. Like, the rest of it, I like it a lot. Okay, so you can see the royal here. Mm, I, I think you can get away with that just better. Well, you'll know. I don't think he's going to get thermal burns. So... I think you're just getting away with that there. Before we move on to the next one, our Christmas jumpers are here. They're out. This is a one-time only sale. These are limited edition from today, December 1st until December 25th. If you don't get them, they're gone. Even I can't get them once they're gone. Link is in the description. Go check out the Christmas jumpers because when they're gone, they're gone. And in the future when this channel takes off, and everyone's like, oh, I was here from the start. Well, you could say, well, I was here from the start. And they'll be like, prove it. And you'll be like, well, I have the OG Christmas jumper that was never sold ever again. So, okay, this submission is from Rutger. This is a bearded dragon enclosure. It's five foot by two foot by three foot tall. It's got a custom background for elevated spots with logs, cork pieces. And it's got a 15 centimeter depth of substrate being 80% topsoil to 20% play sand and they've got Arcadia T5, Lucky Reptile halogens, Arcadia halogens and then like an LED bar. So let's have a look at this. So straight away I actually really like this. If you don't know I'm doing my Bearded Dragon deep dive project where I'm trying to learn everything about Bearded Dragon that there ever was, every study that ever was. So I have learned quite a bit recently and basically in winter they'll sleep in their brumation burrows because they're brumating but in spring they all sleep in escape burrows, and these are only kind of like shallow burrows, maybe like 30 centimetres under the surface, and that is just their little uh, nighttime hideaway. But at this time in spring, the nighttime predators, like the mulga snake, aren't active at these temperatures yet, so that's why they feel safe in there. But when it comes to summer, 
Bird of dragons sleep in trees exclusively because it's safer up a tree where the mulga snake and nighttime predators can't access them as quick as easily. Whereas if they stayed in those escape burrows, it'd be a dead end with one entrance and the snake would be able to come in easily and eat them. So throughout their whole entire yearly cycle, they almost become strictly arboreal in the summer in the way that they sleep. So with this enclosure, you're allowing him to find those elevated spots and that will be suitable throughout the year. And he'll also be able to dig a burrow in this enclosure with this top slot, which is perfect. I really like this. I think that basking spot at the top left is brilliant. You can access both sides of this enclosure from that cork at the back. I really like it. I think the one thing that you could add is an LED spotlight. Now, I don't know if you've seen the Dasku bulb that I've got in my enclosure, but if you just got that and angled that towards that spot on the top left, I think you would really bring out the uh, increased lux in that part of the enclosure and it really bring that basking spot together but other than that i think this is a really good enclosure and you're doing far more uh, behavior wise for your bitter dragon than most bitter dragon owners are most bitter dragon keepers don't even realize that their species is semi-arboreal so i think you're doing really well here and i really like this enclosure okay our next submission is from tum southern his corn slick enclosure She's only five months old. She's got a really complex soil substrate here with soil, excavator clay, orchid bark, sand mixes with isopods. There's a bioactive here. Lighting is a 75 watt halogen, 51 watt jungle dawn and Arcadia shade dweller. All set to timers so that it ramps up from sunrise and sunset. So this is really cool. And she's got climbing ledges and walls. So let's have a look here. Yeah, I can see what you've done here, where you've got the halogen directed at this back right basking spot, and you've got the slate there to absorb that infrared and re-radiate it at a later time. I think you've done that really well. I think the background's cool. Yeah, I really like the theme that you're going through here. I think it's really cool. What I would say, I think it's perfect for, for digging opportunities, but the climbing opportunities aren't really there for me. I think it'd be really beneficial to really introduce some branches or just things that make the space really more three-dimensional on top of that background that you've got. So things like cork branches make a complex like web of climbing to, to climb around just so she can get a body off the floor on branches that aren't actually the wall. And I think it would just add that next little step to make the enclosure that much more three-dimensional and we got to remember corn snakes are also semi-arboreal so i know she can climb on that background but it would be really beneficial to get some branches in there and get her climbing around all over the place our next submission is from michael this is a pair of frill dragons in a four by two by four they've got prote 5 uvb arcadia jungle dawn basking floodlights from arcadia they get hand misted each day they've got a misting system too and they've got an air pump in the water bowl, like I do, to get things aerating and get movement in the water. And it's a big bioactive substrate with a drainage layer and everything. So let's have a look. Okay, so I think you're missing one thing here. So like in this picture here, when they're sat vertical on this cork, I think you'd be better off getting quite a girthy piece of wood. Um, measuring it to the, to the height of the inside of this vivarium cutting it down and then getting it in there um obviously you're gonna have to put it down into the substrate and then wedge that so there's like a pillar in the middle of the enclosure well that will allow it will allow these thrill dragons to sit vertical on this branch like they do in the wild um because otherwise apart from this cork bark you haven't really got anywhere for them to sit in that vertical position that they're so well known for so uh, other than that i think the enclosure is perfect i think you're do doing like brilliant job it's just the one vertical spot i think that one central pillar at the front i think just that one thing i think would take this enclosure to the next level okay this one's for rudemare i have an african fat tail gecko um has a jungle dawn infrared lamp and uvb um one upgrade i'm thinking of doing is having a cork background similar to jtv reptiles leopard gecko enclosure keep up the videos and good work i definitely think copy joe Joe is on it with those 3D backgrounds. He's brilliant. Oh, and it's a video. So let's watch this. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think in addition to what you've done, which I think is perfect, it's really complex on the floor here. There's opportunities for them to hide everywhere. I think that just that 3D background idea that you have will take that to the next level. Maybe even like a cork branch somewhere 
just allow them to climb up like a thin branch or something. Don't be afraid to allow them to climb up branches and stuff. But I think your idea is perfect and I think that's exactly what will take this enclosure to the next level. So, do it. Okay, so we have Nathan from Nathan's Exotics and More. This is his 5x2x2 five by two by two Vivarian for his Bearded Dragon. It's a three-year-old Bearded Dragon called Venom. That's a cool name. Uh, it's got a 75, 75 watt halogen heat lamp, Pro T5 UVB, uh, and Jungle Dorm, and I've got beard in my mouth, and the, 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 the fluff is disgusting. Uh, yeah, if you could give me any recommendations to make it more enriching, that would be appreciated. Okay, let's have a look. I'm liking it, and I'm liking how much of this is sand as well. So in the wild, they um, not only do they use sand to warm up, but also if they get too hot, they'll go off and find like a patch of sand in the shade and they'll spread their belly out on that sand and they'll sit there and they'll let that heat um, go out into the cool sand beneath them to try and cool down. So sand is actually plays a pivotal part in a thermoregulation, which I don't think people realise. Um, so a lot of their thermoregulation is part of their, their belly as well, which people don't know. Just wait until this deep dive comes out because I'm going to blow everyone's minds. I like how you've left an open spot at the front for running around and stuff. I think Joe made a good point when he said to leave some space at the front for them to run. I like that a lot. I think attaching some more cork or making some shelves and attaching them to the walls would really make this enclosure a bit more three-dimensional. So like the past one we saw where they used those L brackets and a piece of wood to create a shelf. Now what you could do is do that, create a shelf, and then buy those cork bark sheets, the backgrounds they use for exoterras, but cut that down and put it on the actual shelf so that you've got a cork shelf. And then you could use cork bark leading up to those shelves and you could create like a whole wall of cork shelves and make it really three-dimensional. And I think that will take us to the next level. I think if you introduced a LED spotlight, like the Dasku ones that I use, that would really increase the lux at that basking spot on the rocks. And I think that would take this to the next level too. But other than that, it's a good enclosure. Cooper? What? This is Cooper from Coop's Reptiles, like sneakily submitting a submission in here. So, <laughs> did not expect this. Centralian blue tongue enclosure. Real rocks stack hide with a warm side to retain heat. Fake rock hide made by myself and cool. Lots of spoon effects plants and eucalyptus branches for extra cover. T5 12%. Flood lamp and a 6,500k LED once it all arrives. I'm so jealous of the, you having access to all the Australian plants. I would love to have spin effects in my Bearded Dragon enclosure. Um, yeah, I'm jealous. I really am jealous. Oh, look at the background on that. I'm not even reviewing it at this point. I'm just gooing over his enclosure. That's nice. Look at that. That background and the grass and all of that. That's top, top level stuff. Yep, nothing for me to say other than I really like your Australian stuff and I'm insanely jealous. So yeah. Thanks Coop, I didn't know you were going to do that. That's a surprise. I'll have to at you when I make a post or something. So you know that I've seen it. <sighs> right, this is from Annalise, the all Canadian reptile girl. Uh, oh, the 8 foot 5 McClot python. It's a 4 foot by 4 foot. 0.5 by 8 foot enclosure made from an outdoor birdhouse. So we've got an 8 foot snake in a 4 foot long enclosure, but it's complex and 8 foot high. So this is where my dilemma is. You've got absolute complexity here and the opportunity to climb, but it's an 8 foot snake in a 4 foot long enclosure. And I agree that complexity can, can outweigh length for snakes. So I have my Mexican black king snake who's just over 3 foot by a couple of inches and he's going into a, a three foot enclosure three by two by two with a custom background um rock background ledges all over the place branches all over the place it's going to be like a really complex enclosure so although he's longer than the enclosure marginally i would argue this enclosure was better for him because i've got a universal rock background to fit it than a four foot that was flat but with just branches everywhere because the Three foot's more complex, but with this, there's only a certain point that complexity makes up for a lack of space. So for me, I would really like to see a longer enclosure 
here, but also I can see that you've made a really complex enclosure. If he gets a lot of time out of the enclosure, and he gets to free roam like Laurie Torini style, then it wouldn't be as bad, but I don't know, does he just stay in that enclosure or not? I would like to see a longer enclosure, if it, if it were me, if it were me, I would, I would, I would be happy with this enclosure because it's really good, complexity wise. But I would just be wanting my next upgrade to be just a bit bigger, longer, is what I would say. That's what I would really be looking to do. But you've done a perfect job of complexity wise, and that basking spot looks really good. So it's just the length. That's the only concern. But other than that, I like it. Okay, so let's go through these in quick succession because I want to make sure everyone gets their enclosures in this video because it's the Christmas video I want to make sure everyone that's submitted gets seen so we're gonna do them all I don't know how long this is gonna be but hang on right so straight away right straight away the baby Imperator I like the complexity of this it gets to climb I would add some more branches I would get rid of that red lamp straight away and get a normal basking halogen um, in place of it just the one where it's like the the natural daylight orange glow rather than that red tint to the glass just get just get rid of that if you can. I would scrap that straight away and get a different bulb in there. Other than that, I like the enclosure. It's longer than he is, but looks for at the moment, so can't complain. He's got hides on both ends. He can get underneath that leaf litter if he wants and really be cryptic. He can bask because he's got UV. He can climb. Just add some more branches in there if you can. But other than that, it's it's okay. Um, you can add some things to the walls, like other people are suggesting, to make it a bit more three-dimensional. But yeah, the on my only issue with that is the halogen basking lamp that's red. Scrap it. Right, next enclosure. So this l lower one is for your royal. Um, I would add some more complexity to the right of this. Get some more cork in there if you can. The climbing opportunities are good, I like it. Scrap the red halogens. Scrap them. They're no good. It's that that they're marketed as infrared bulbs, but it's actually just a red tint. If you if you're using a normal halogen, it's near it's near infrared anyway. So just scrap the red tinted bulbs, the shit. But yeah, it's fine. It depends on your humidity levels, because if your humidity levels are naturally where you want them to be for a royal python, then I don't see a problem with shavings. Um I would say make sure you've got a humid hide. Actually that spot at the bottom left, if you could get like a humid hide tub with a hole cut in it, and get some moss in there, then it, that's kind of your failsafe to counterbalance the, the use of shavings. Now, I don't know what your humidity levels are, but I would say get a humidity hide in there, um, just to allow them to replicate those burrow conditions, because they are subterranean, they do not use the burrows, they're not only semi-arboreal, so you want the best of both worlds here, so I would add a humid hide here. Okay, so this is from Paul Smith. He's got a 1.5 year old corn snake, 4 foot enclosure, 50 watt deep heat projector of guard, 7% uh, UV, liquid seal and all that stuff. So let's have a look. I like this climbing thing you've got on the right there. But what I would do is try and add way more complexity than there is. Like, just buy a bulk bag of cork and just fling it all in there. Um, you can do the shelf idea like others have suggested. Um, J2B Reptiles has a good video on that. I would suggest doing that. Also... I wouldn't use a deep heat projector. Go for a halogen. I I know you might be using the deep heat projector for nighttime heat, but I'm telling you, a corn snake, unless your house gets absolutely like freezing, it needs the nighttime drop anyway. So just get rid of the deep heat projector. Get a good halogen basking lamp in there. Again, make it way more complex if you can. Um, the walls, you've got a nice bit of space here on these walls. So it seems like the perfect opportunity to start making these shelves and uh, doing something really creative there to make it a bit more three-dimensional but other than that you've got UV you've got overhead basket like you're already doing more than the 99% of corn snake keepers who uh, are using like just a heat mat and stuff so you're doing well All right we've got Victoria here All right the enclosure is six by two by four with a female carpet python who is six foot nine um, end goal is an 8 foot long by 4 foot wide by 6 foot high. Yes! Okay, let's have a look. That is nice. It is one of the best carpet python enclosures I've seen. The complexities there, the climbing opportunities there, the basking opportunities there. Like, even at the top left here, you've got that bed at the top 
that netting bird. So even even in an already arboreal enclosure, she can get right to the top there. Yeah, I like that a lot. To, to be honest, there's nothing I would tell you to change. I mean, you're upgrading, so when you upgrade, you're going to have an amazing enclosure that no one can ever even comment on. Like, well, it's brilliant. We've got a leopard gecko set up here. Um, it's hard to see the full enclosure in these pictures. They're kind of all at an angle where it doesn't show the full enclosure. So I can't really comment too much, but from what we can see, it looks really complex. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really see it, so I can't really comment that much. But it looks like there's a climbable wall. There's opportunities to to hide, to dig. There's cork rounds that can get in. It looks complex. Uh, again, with the DP projector, scrap it, use a halogen. I don't understand. I don't know where the obsession with DP projectors is coming from. It looks really complex for a leopard gecko. It looks like you're doing well. Again, halogen, halogen, halogen. Okay, this is an enclosure for a bearded dragon. It's six foot long, two foot deep, and three foot high. Okay, so Christopher here wants me to mention his Instagram. So it's at RethinkerCraft on Instagram. So if you want to go check out his Instagram, go for it. So I like this enclosure. What you've got is the opportunity to climb. You've got all this rock wall stuff. You've got the opportunity for them to go into the dark to escape the UV. You've got climbing opportunities everywhere. Um, the only issue I have with this enclosure is that it looks like a lack of substrate. Or is that substrate? Forgive me if it is substrate and I'm talking out of my ass, but it looks as if it's like a solid material you've put down. Because there's ventilation at the front, so it looks like if you put sand in, it will all come pouring out. But that's my main issue with this enclosure, is that sand has a big part to play in their behaviour. Even how they thermoregulate, like I've said previously. So... And just the ability to dig is really important for bearded dragons. So even if you included like a a tub of substrate at the back under that ledge here, just to allow them to actually dig, I think that would be a good idea. It's difficult because you said this is your friend's enclosure that you built for them. So if they're like dead set against substrate, then you can't really control that. But yeah, substrate is a massive part to play in a bearded dragon's welfare. So now we'd also get rid of the hammock. On the left there. Hammock makes a spine sit in a weird way that it wouldn't naturally. So just scrap that. Other than that, I think it's a good enclosure. I would offer some more branches maybe. Um, all over the place. But yeah, have that complexity. It's a big long enclosure for a bit of dragon. Far bigger than my own. So I think it's a good enclosure. I like it a lot. This is from Rex Kaluba. Finally got around to it, mate. I think you submitted it like two of these ago, but <laughs> anyway, you ended up being in the one where I'm dressed as Santa, so it's not that bad, is it? <laughs> or is it bad? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so overall, this enclosure is eight foot long, seven feet tall, has UVB and halogen basking spots, exhaust fans on it and everything, plenty of climbing space and to burrow. He's cohabbing Brazilian rainbow bows and hog island bows. This is cool. So at first glance, this looks small, but you wait, because I know what this looks like. This extends round the corner and it goes down like that. That's really cool. I think it's a really cool enclosure and I'm getting suffocated. It's just fluff like flying off everywhere it's every time I touch this. But um yeah, it's it's brilliant. I I I think it's got good opportunity to climb. You've got something going up on that top left, that box thing. Opportunities to burrow down there. You've got cork hides. Is that cork round as well? So it's hollow. Like the whole thing's really cool. And you can see here, Brazilian rainbow bird being able to actually act arboreal. So yeah, it's really cool. I like that enclosure a lot. There's not much I can say because you've gone far above and beyond what I've ever been able to do in within my limitations in this room. So good on you, mate. I can't really compete with that. So yeah, it's good. This is from Felix from Germany for his corn snake Moses. He doesn't currently have UV, but he's planning on building an outdoor enclosure so I can let him bask in the sun in the summer months. And I should probably buy a UVB bar as well. As live plants and some isopods. Substrate is cocoa fiber with potting soil and oak leaves. Oh, this is cool. I like this a lot. So this has perfect opportunity for climbing here. It has substrate to dig you've got a basking spot there which is really nice you've got hides everywhere it's complex it's, but it's planted you've got moisture pockets in there you say i like it i think it's good 
I think the UV at the basket spot would be the next step. Maybe put, if you've got some cork rounds, put them on the floor at the front and stuff, and something that goes around the basking spot. Just to put some, like, hides there for them to actually, to bask, but not in light. So, like, thigmothermic opportunities at that spot. But it looks like you've got complexity around that basking spot as well. So, can't really tell from this picture, but it looks good. I think, yeah, definitely. Definitely build the outdoor enclosure and include a UVB bar. The UV would take this to a top level enclosure, so I think that's the only thing you're missing out on, and I definitely recommend you do it. Cool, so if you saw last time, there was an enclosure in our last video where they showed all the how they're placing all the cork and how complex it's going to look, and I thought it looked brilliant. This is the end result, and it looks, it looks really good. I love it. I love that the fact that this cork across the front, across the top there, is also hollow. It looks really complex. There's human microclimates in there because the plants moss everywhere like the lighting's on point so i know it's good because i've read it the whole thing looks really good I'm, I'm so pleased that you showed us the end result as well because now there's a transition from the last video to this video and we see how you've done it it's brilliant i like it a lot so this is from antonia and these are for her villiads this is for the villiads chameleon geckos i'll be honest with you i'd, I'd actually never heard of them before but let's have a look so you've got your halogen, your jungle dawn, and your UVB bar. And you've got nice little complex enclosures. There's depth to them, there's hiding opportunities. I'm not going to speak too much because obviously I had no idea what the species was, so I can't really advise on a species that I don't know. But to me it looks really cool. It looks really complex. It looks like there's a lot of microclimates in here. Opportunities for them to hunt with the bioactive aspect as well. I think it's really good. I'm sorry I couldn't really nitpick too much because I don't know the species, but... I'm not going to talk up my ass. So if you saw the last video, you would have seen that we had that Lake Kapala garter snake set up that I reviewed and gave some advice on. So now we have what's changed from that setup in this submission. Yes, it looks a lot more complex. We've got the pothos here. Um, the only thing is, by making it more complex, you've reduced the size of the water bowl. And I wouldn't have done that. I, would, I know you're saying that you want to build like a a new setup with an aquarium attached to it but i would not have reduced the size of the water bowl given the nature of these snakes but obviously you know your animals and you know how much they use their water bowl so it's completely up to you what size water bowl you provide because i know that you'll be watching them and how they access how they utilize that water so yeah it looks really good i I think this has definitely taken it to that, that next step. And it, I, I think it's brilliant to see people's progressions. I, I really enjoy these videos and I can see how well people have progressed. And to be honest, half these enclosures are better than what I've got. So you've all surpassed me. <laughs> you've all surpassed me. And now I'm just desperately trying to catch up. Cool. So this is a 40 gun enclosure for the MBK. Let's have a look. Well, you've definitely got complexity down. <laughs> so you've got your, your jungle dawn. You've got your halogen set up. You've got your basking spot. You've definitely gone all out on complexity. It's not really my cup of tea um, with that fairy garden-esque vibe, but that means nothing. As long as it's complex, there's opportunities to hide, um, there's microclimates, there's opportunity to bask. Like if it's if the functionality is all there, it doesn't matter. So I don't know. Did you do you have a humid hide? Because that's the one thing I would say is to get a humid hide in there. Yeah, humid hide. Get a humid eye in there, and then I think you've pretty much got it all got it all down. So if you like these style of enclosure reaction videos, give this video a like so I know that you're enjoying it, and check out these videos here from previous videos, and go through the entire playlist of enclosure reaction videos because they'll give you brilliant ideas on how to do some of your setups. You might have some light bulb moments here from watching these videos, so go ahead and watch the playlist here.